I'm joined by Fabiano Caruana from the USA. Very important day for him. He's just defeated the current world champion, uh, World Cup champion, uh, Duda. So Fabiano, you go on to the next round where you'll face Lanier. But first of all, uh, take me through today's game. Uh, it seemed to me a very nice, attractive attacking game. Would it be correct to say that his move pawn to F3 for those viewers who are watching the game would be more or less the decisive mistake or not? So I, I wasn't sure if it was a de the decisive mistake. I didn't feel like I was winning after knight c4, but uh, but if you tell me, you probably you probably it is. Uh, no, I, I'm, I want to know but, your, your opinion. Uh, my feeling was that he misplayed the opening with g4 and knight e5, okay. and then I'm very comfortable. I mean, he should play bishop g5. Uh, and it's definitely what he was doing. I mean, he gets the bishop pair, but it, it felt like he's taking too much time and he's, he's weakening his king side. But still, I, I had to... to um, take a lot of time for this moment f5 because it's a very responsible decision i wasn't sure uh but i, I thought okay maybe bravery re will be re rewarded in this in this case and so i went for what felt like the principled continuation and i saw f3 knight c4 in advance i thought he would play rook c1 instead trade rooks and i wasn't sure if i was better or not but mm -hmm. it looked like i have a very um very interesting position i mean i, I definitely have the initiative yeah f3 knight c4 i felt like it's also very safe which is I guess he just missed the possibility entirely, and uh, then it looks like a very sad position because my king is somehow extremely safe on h7. It, if it gets checked from h4, it goes to g8. It, it's somehow difficult for him to uh, generate counterplay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how bad it was after, let's say, um, when we got this position, um, when I played uh, with the queen on d8, yeah? when, he, when he played queen c3. Maybe he had some more tenacious way of playing. But after queen c3, my moves flowed rather naturally. I thought king h7 is natural, queen d5. After king g3, I started to feel like this must be a winning position, maybe in more than one way. But uh, it was still very stressful because it's a very, very concrete position. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he, he found this uh, resource rook c1, which was quite tenacious, I thought. Then I have two pawns, but they're kind of weak. And I thought a rook endgame wasn't really winning. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to keep the queens on. Also queen endgame, I thought wasn't winning. Uh, and then after d5, I had this very difficult decision, rook f4, rook e7. I kind of went with my gut on, on that one and uh, and it paid off. But uh, it was also difficult to see this queen, this rook d4, queen g6, detail man, which I don't know if it's the only way, but I didn't see any other way to convert the advantage. And after that, it was it was pretty smooth. So do you think, uh, did, did things go to uh, how you w were expected? Or after yesterday's draw with the white pieces, you thought that most probably you go to a tie break? No, certainly I didn't expect to win with, with black. Uh, I, I thought that a draw would be good, and we play a tiebreak, which is, uh, I mean, let's say close to a 50-50 affair. I, I think that we're, we're pretty evenly matched, uh, but especially in a two-game match, you know, any, anything could happen. Uh, I wasn't surprised that he decided to play ambitiously because it's, it's sort of his style, mm -hmm. but I felt that he kind of played a little bit recklessly in the opening. Uh, he could have played for a, a, a safe, slight advantage with bishop g5, and instead he took these really risky decisions, which I think weren't, let's say, you know, in terms of the match situation, I mean, he didn't need to take these risks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe his play was a little bit uh, reckless. Mm -hmm. So, um, tomorrow you have a rest day, but your opponent also has a rest day, and you'll face uh, your teammate, Lenier Dominguez. I have some information here. I looked at the database. I saw you played 68 games, which is a huge, most of them blitz and rapid, has to be said. But you actually have quite a good score against uh, Lenier. Especially in the last 15 games, you've been more or less crushing him in blitz and rapid. Classical games are more or less level. Uh, of course, a very strong player, but do you think you're a favorite in this matchup? No, I really wouldn't say that. I think it's, again, close to 50-50. I think in these two-game matches, um, first of all, pass results, okay, maybe they have some some relevance, but uh, I wouldn't say they have huge significance over, over this particular match. And Lanier is in good form. I, I've been really impressed with how he's playing. He seems very in control in, in all his matches. Uh, he had one slight scare against Kusainov earlier in the tournament. But the, the thing which I find interesting is that the first World Cup I played in uh, was in 2009 in, in Hanti Mansisk. And I, I was just, I was very young then. I mean, I, it was my first time playing a really serious event like that. And I played Lanier in, I think, the third round. And we played a really tough match. I eventually won. But mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's funny how it came full circle. So uh, he was probably playing for Cuba back then. Yeah, yeah, and I was playing for Italy mm -hmm. uh, at the time. Um, of course, he was a big favorite at the time. He was he was twenty seven plus. I was, I think I was twenty six seventy, but I was uh, I was definitely an underdog. But I, I managed to 
to win a really, really close, tough match. So I just like how it came full circle after 14 years. Um, but it'll be, you know, I'm, just, I'm happy to be here. It'll be a pleasure to, to be able to still be in the tournament and, and fighting. So both yourself, Abbasov, and uh, of course, Kikaru, and of course, Magnus, you're normally being sworn by your fans out here. Photographs, photo opportunities, autographs. Is this a problem for you after a tough game or you, is it a way to relax and unwind? Do you like this? Do you enjoy this, uh, this extra part of your, your job, actually? Not too much, to be honest. <laughs> I'd like to give another answer, but I, I'm, not a, I'm not someone who likes attention too much. And, uh, and so it, I find it, um, I also find it funny that people want my autograph, but it, it's nice that there are fans who enjoy my chess. Uh, but yeah, the attention is not really for me. But you understand that a lot of kids uh, maybe even idolize your way of playing, your, the way you, your demeanor, the way you play on the board? Yeah, no, that, that definitely feels very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, cheers. Thank, Thank you. you.